All right, welcome to Code.org, Unit 7, Lesson 8, the Make a Library Project. Um, this is part one of the project. Um, so for teachers out there, what I like to do here is just sort of run through this first level. Um, and as you can see, I went ahead and put some code out there so you didn't have to watch me type for 10, 15 minutes. Um, but it's some a couple of basic um, financial formulas uh, tapping into my past life as a business teacher. So um, what we want to make sure we do for this to work is you have to have some global comments, comments that exist in the global space and not just inside the function definition. Otherwise, you'll get an error later. Um, so what I do is I just kind of walk through a couple of examples with students. Um, I know there is the code.org project guide. I typically just ask students um, if they follow along with me as I'm doing this in class and they want to stick to this sort of financial option, um, I kind of show them how to do two and I ask them to do two more functions and then um, export their library. If they would like to do their own library, which I also encourage, um, they have to do at least three functions. Um, so it just kind of, I feel like at that point they understand what to do. I also, if they're making their own functions and when they get to that point, I uh, do ask that they use functions with parameters and that have returns because it's good practice as they get ready for the AP exam. Um, so what I have here is a basic comment explaining this is a library for some basic financial calculations. And then I have a comment that explains this is the simple interest formula. Um, I have three parameters, PRT. I have a comment explaining what each one is, so principal rate and time, time measured in years. And then I have a local variable called interest that gets P times R times T. And then I return um, a dollar sign plus interest. You don't have to do that. That was just something I wanted you to see in the console log when I run this in a second. And then to test it out to make sure it works, I do a console log. I call the function simple interest and I do 5,000, which would be my argument for principal, 0 0.05, which would be my argument for rate or a 5% rate. And then three would be my argument for time or three years. Um, and we'll run that one in a second and see if it works. I also did a return on investment formula, so called the function ROI. You have to be careful with this one because I almost made a parameter called return, and we have a function called return. That would have been a big no-no. Um, so I used earnings instead. So I have uh, investment, and I used balance instead of the word return. Um, so again, this kind of explains investment is the initial amount put in to a savings account, deposit account, if some sort of financial tool. Balance would be the current account balance. So maybe we put something in, we left it for a couple of years, and then we're gonna check the current balance as it compared to the initial investment. Earnings calculates how much money has been earned. So to do that, or to calculate earnings, we do the initial or the current balance minus the initial investment. And then our final part, this divides the current earnings by initial investments. And then it also multiplies it by 100 to get rid of the decimals unless it is a percent. Also, I, co I concatenate it, I add a percent sign to it, um, and then my console log test, I call the function ROI. My first argument is 1,000, which will be the initial investment, and then 1,650 is my final balance. Um, and I'm gonna run it, and as you can see, I probably need to clear that, I'm gonna reset and run again. Um, so it looks like it's running twice for some reason I'm not exactly sure oh because on the the return it's happening on the return um, so um, we see that 75065 um, now one thing I could do to make it more interesting I could actually use my initial investment from my principal 5000 and I could add in that 750, so that'd be 5750, and we could actually get a rate of return. So it'd be a 15% rate of return there. Um, so there we go. Um, that is, in a nutshell, just kind of getting some formulas set up. Now the next step, um, and this one uh, comes, uh, if you've used code.org for a while, you probably know this, if not. So to actually make this a library, this might be the part that some of you came to see. Uh, we're gonna go to share, 
And then we have to click, um, there's an option for, I don't know why mine's defaulting to that. Um, that is bizarre. Um, I'm going to refresh my page. I think something weird is going on there. So I'm going to go to share. There we go. Um, and then you should see show advanced options. And then there's an option to share as a library. All right, I'm going to click share as library. And then down here there's a button to click share as library. Um, and I'm, I've already done this, uh, but I called this library finance. Okay, and it is a library of basic financial calculations in my description. And then you can choose which functions you want to include. Um, I have them select all of them. Um, I don't have to click update or unpublish because I've already done that. Um, and as a teacher, you should see all of them shared. Also, once you share it, if you have a class set up, you should be able to see each other's. If you're a student, once you share it, your teacher should be able to see it, but you may have other directions. Um, a way to share it directly, you can copy that ID. So for example, if I copy that ID, um, and one thing I wanted to show you, since I've already created this library, you probably won't see this immediately, but um, by copying, sharing that library, importing that library, I now have those functions. So if I were to go, um, let's go outside of code.org, lesson eight for a moment, and let's just go to a different, um, so let's just go to libraries practice. Okay, and we had some libraries that we were practicing with. So let's see if it'll let us um, come up here to, so to import a library, this is also good to know, we're gonna go to our toolbox, click on settings, manage libraries, and I'm gonna, I copy that ID, so I can paste that ID, click add, and now when I go to functions, there it is, uh, the financial functions that I came up with. Um, it is now finance.simpleinterest, so the name of the library first, and then the name of my function simple interest. I can go to show code, and there it is. So, and then you can see my comments, you can see my code. So I now have a library I could import uh, to any other level, any other area in my app lab. So I would encourage students to try to do this for something that's going to be useful. Um, students, if you're doing this uh, you know, on your own, I would try to think of functions that maybe you have to create that you could um, set up in a way that you could pull from going forward. Um, but, so that pretty much uh, sums up lesson eight. Uh, I hope this was helpful.